Hey there everybody, welcome back to DAV Tech. It is really nice to see all of you guys here again. If you are new to the channel, my name is Dave and I do tech reviews here. And today for all of you guys, I have a clash of the biggest and best that both Apple and Samsung have to offer, the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the S23 Ultra. I really just try and call things right down the middle as I see them. Much like most people probably watching this video or in the world period, I'm not filthy rich. And so spending big money on devices Devices like this do matter in both the short term and the long term if you're like financing or leasing a phone. Oh, and um, before we go any further in the video, just know that no matter what phone you pick, don't let anybody bash you for it. Some people might say, oh, you're an iPhone sheep or you're a Galaxy noob or whatever people say nowadays. I always say the best phone for you is the phone that does what you want and need it to do. And ultimately, that's all that matters. We're going to talk about those things today and you'll see for yourself if which phone fits what you want and what you need. Now, other me is going to sit here and talk to you about stuff and I'm going to come back this way and do my thing. I'm starting off a little bit unorthodox, I think, talking about the speakers, but the reason I'm starting with this is because this is something that really stood out to me in like the past couple of days when really breaking down these phones in video consumption. I will say that in terms of the screen, A, no matter which phone you choose, just flat out, point blank, you're getting an amazing and beautiful and crisp and detailed um, viewing experience, just hands down. Now, the Galaxy S23 Ultra is a larger display, so you get more screen real estate to view the content that you're watching or even playing a game. But the iPhone 14 Pro Max is a large display and still a beautiful one. Though if you ask me, I do like the colors a bit more on the S23 Ultra and I feel as though video content on here is just a bit more crisp and detailed but that doesn't mean that this one is a bad display it's just something that i noticed and for a large majority of people that are using a phone on a day-to-day -day basis if they don't have them side by side you're not going to notice if i'm being honest that being said i know some people are concerned about the notch and the placement of the dynamic island and how that gets in the way of viewing dude Seriously, like, yes, is it awesome that this one does not have that and so viewing is more seamless? Yes, um, and I do love that. But honestly, watching content on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, for me, after a little bit, it kind of just vanishes. I brought up the video content and viewing, also looking at like music, because the speakers on these things, the speakers on the Galaxy Fold 4 are better than on the uh, Pixel 7 Pro, but Google did improve on the 7 Pro speakers. Um, there's still some work to do there. The S23 Ultra speakers are definitely better than the Fold 4, but the iPhone 14 Pro Max speakers are... These are still very crisp and detailed um, and get pretty darn loud, but there's just a bassiness and a there's more of a punch in the audio that you're getting out of the iPhone 14 Pro Max than the S23 Ultra. Now these two devices have things that are unique to them. Over here on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, you have the Dynamic Island. And over here on the S23 Ultra, you have the S Pen that you can just pop the pen out and your phone basically turns into a notepad. For someone like myself who works as a therapist, this is something that fits into my lifestyle a bit better. So for example, on the Galaxy Fold 4, and if you've watched my videos before, I talk about this a lot because it's a very genuine and real life use case that kind of accentuates my lifestyle and highlights the the cool usability factor of phones nowadays and how they can fit into one's lifestyle. On the Fold 4, I use that as a signing pad for my clinical work, for signing documentation for my clients and so on. On the S23 Ultra, because of how massive the screen is and because of the S Pen, that is a real life applicable use case that I can bring this phone along for, have it in my pocket, and it also not only works for me in terms of social media and texting, but it also bridges the gap between normal life and like work life, and that is awesome. 
you don't have that over here on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. That being said, not everyone needs a S Pen in their phone, and a lot of people are never going to use it. A lot of people are never going to want it, but for me, that's something that works. What you do have over here, though, is that dynamic island, which when it first came out using it, I thought it was really, really cool. And to this day, though it's not the most groundbreaking software inclusion, I think it is still neat that your phone sort of interacts with you. It's not a game breaker. It's not massively a game changer in my opinion. But for those of you who want or need something like that in your life and you enjoy the way that the dynamic island accentuates your phone's usage, that's something you're not getting over on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Now there are third party applications that are sort of like workarounds on the S23 Ultra, just by the nature of Android being more open source, you could download basically any app that you wanna download. If you ask me in my personal life, the Dynamic Island doesn't fit for me in more ways than the S Pen does. And that's just because of my work. But being objective, I don't think that either is necessarily a make or break feature for these phones. They're more just additional beneficial um, applications that can accentuate your lifestyle. If you're enjoying the video so far, want to stay up to date with more comparisons for the iPhone 14 Pro Max or the S23 Ultra or any other devices, um, hitting the subscribe button is the best way to stay up to date with what I am doing next. And leave a comment in the comment section if you're team iPhone, leave me a banana emoji, hashtag banana. Or if you're more so on the S23 side, leave me a um, an eggplants emoji, hashtag Eggplant. Now, both of these phones are massive devices. Thankfully for me, I have larger hands, and so like the S23 Ultra is not really a problem to use one-handed for myself, but objectively speaking, this thing is just freaking huge, man. I mean, yes, it's amazing because when you have it, it's like just having a massive glass slab in your hand. The screen is beautiful for gaming and videos, kind of like I talked about before. But geez, this is a big phone. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is also a large phone, but it's easier to reach the top shelf. Now, both devices do have that one-handed mode where you swipe down on the bottom of the display. It shrinks the screen for you so you can reach everything. But in terms of like the phone that you have to do that less with or proper grammar, fewer times with, fewer, right? Because you can actually count it. Some of you can correct me in the comments less times with is the iphone 14 pro max definitely because the screen is just not as large it's much easier to reach the notification bar it's much easier to access all portions of the screen and i can do that with this one but realistically speaking it's going to be a hassle for a lot of people and so if you're looking at one hand usability it definitely goes to the iphone 14 pro max i will say that the s23 ultra compared to the s22 ultra has more squared size and i find that that actually helps with the one-handed usability compared to the 22. The 22 had more of those slope edges and so you know it made it easier for your thumb or your index or middle finger to sort of like slip off the sides or here because the edges are more squared off gripping it is much easier but if you're looking for you one hand usability definitely over here on the iPhone. I will say that certain things like, for example, airdrop between like my iPhone to the iPad to the MacBook, I definitely think that that works faster and smoother than the nearby share from the Galaxy devices like the Galaxy Tab or another Samsung device, for example. Those work, but they're just not as one click and go as on the iPhone. But outside of that, if I'm being completely honest with you, um, They've done an exceptional job here. You know, I, I was someone that for a while was kind of like, you know, I would put up with some of the annoyances because this is just a much more open platform to use. I can do basically what I want, how I want, when I want, where iPhone is more of a curated experience, which for a lot of people obviously works because this is the most popular phone on the gosh darn planet. Um, and so that's awesome. Um, but using the S23 Ultra and the Fold 4, I don't feel like I'm making a compromise for openness versus like smoothness and user experience because they've really, they've really honed in and, uh, and polished a lot of that. So if you're looking, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes burps just come out. You could argue that there's been a lack of iteration and development on the iPhone side of things. And if you ask me personally, the way that I like to use devices, I might be inclined to agree, but people buy these things like hotcakes. Yes, 
one of those things is because it's like a status sort of thing but b because like these phones for a long time you just pick up and they work so if you're looking for like good user experience you're getting that in spades on both of these devices the iPhone's met its match, I would say, in terms of battery life. I've been able to use both of these phones all day and like barely kill them. I can start my day at like 7, 8 a.m., do everything that I wanna do, texting, phone calls, gaming, take pictures, everything. These guys have you covered. Um, I have to say I'm really impressed that Samsung was able to do that because for a little bit that was kind of something that was lacking in Samsung devices. But if you want a battery champ on the Android side of things, the S23 Ultra really has come through. Now normally in the side-by-side -side phone comparisons, I do sort of like that test where I put the phone side-by-side -side, um, and I open up a suite of different applications, close them, then reopen them to check RAM management. Um, <laughs> Flat out, there's no reason to really do that here because no matter which one of these phones you're getting, you're getting an amazing experience either way, if I'm being honest. Like, sometimes this might open an app like a fraction of a second faster. This one might open an app a fraction of a second faster. And that could be human error too. Like, for some reason, I twitched and like my left hand touched it first or I twitched and my right hand touched it first. Ultimately, real world usability if i'm being honest with you guys you pick up one of these phones and like you're just getting a good experience you just are we've gotten to a really good point where like you press an app and the phone opens it like almost instantly so you're really covered in that way in terms of gaming both of these things are absolute powerhouses every single game you want to play on both of these at the absolute maximum settings and you're not going to have any problems in terms of performance the s23 ultra is able to run genshin impact on maximum everything and 60 frames per second and handle that well there's no option for 120 frames per second like over here on the iphone 14 pro max there's an option for that over here however um, it handles 60 frames per second flawlessly just like the s23 ultra and it can go up to 120 frames however do start to get slowed down and some chugging um, here and there when you're in combat um, if you lower some of the other settings like bloom or anti-aliasing and then go 120 frames you get a smoother experience but if you want to max out everything you can do that at 60 frames per second on both of these devices something additionally to note that the iphone 14 pro max is an absolute powerhouse and could do this thing but Apple just doesn't have it as a feature, is Samsung DeX on the S23 Ultra. That's something that I've used on my Galaxy Fold 4 at times, and on the S23 Ultra, it is just such an impressive experience. You can have multiple windows and tabs open at the same time, and it's incredible that you can just hook it up to any monitor or display, and it just works. You can browse the internet, you can work on your spreadsheets or Excel or your documents for typing for, so like for myself, I can use when typing up my notes for my clients and not have any problem can i just pull out my macbook yeah but like if i don't have my macbook and i just have i say i'm at the library and i have my phone i can just plug my phone into the display and i have a, my laptop basically um and so that's something that i think is really really impressive about the s23 ultra it's and again i i emphasize that the iphone 14 pro max absolutely has the raw computing power to do the same thing it's just not something that's available on the iphone 14 pro max does everyone need it no but for someone that that extra flexibility and integration into their work lifestyle would be beneficial that's just something you can only get on the s23 ultra in this comparison of course you can do it on the fold or the 22 but for this video the s23 ultra does it and it does it well so it's camera time and usually for these videos you guys really seem to like when i just kind of don't talk too much and just show walk you through like my experience going through like a park or the outdoors taking pictures videos and let you guys decide what you think so i'm going to do that I just want to note before we get into the segment completely that every time, every single time that I pick up an iPhone, I know for a fact that I'm getting amazing, amazing pictures and video. And it's been that way for years. Samsung has really, really nailed the photography and videography over here on the 23 Ultra. That 8K 30 mode, they've really knocked that out of the park. But I'll let you guys decide what you think.
All right, guys, so here's the portrait video out of both of these devices. Straight away, in terms of actual quality, both of these phones are amazing. I will say, in terms of the actual color that I see with my own eyes, in terms of like the scene that's actually around me and my own skin tone, I have to say that the S23 Ultra does handle that. Um, or rather, it's more accurate. The iPhone looks really good. Um, things are a bit more muted over here. Or on the S23 Ultra, things are a bit more accurate to what I'm seeing with my eye. Well, I mean, you're sort of nitpicking at this point because both look excellent. Alright guys, so here on both of these devices you have the 4K 60 mode. I think both look really good. I'm going to pen over here to this tree so you guys can see what that looks like in comparison. I do think that the colors of the tree and the leaves look a little bit closer to what I'm seeing with my own eyes on the S23 Ultra. In terms of detail though, you're getting really good image quality out of both of these devices. I think the bark holds up well on both, of course, most processing is a little bit of a different thing. Ultimately, you're getting a good picture no matter which phone you're going with. If you're looking for a phone that sort of does what the iPhone does, I would argue like in most ways just as well, which is a feat because these have been amazing for so many years, but also goes a little bit further beyond. That's a Dragon Ball Z reference, Super Saiyan 3. Um, this is the way to go, I think. And for me personally, this fits my life usage a bit more. But the final line here is that no matter which of these two devices you're picking up today, or in a week, or in a month, you're getting an exceptional phone. And both of these things pretty much have you covered. With a few more branches over here of things you may want or needed to do, but both great phones. So if you're looking for more content, you can click on these or this over here. Um, thanks again for stopping by and hanging out. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, hit the notification bell, thumbs up helps me out a ton. And uh, as always guys, peace, oh, peace, love, and adios. Have a fantastic remainder of your day and uh, be awesome. Bye.